Thank you, everybody. I'm Speaker Mike Torzai, and I'm joined here today by Representative Jim Christiana of Beaver County, Representative Jim Marshall, Beaver County, Chairwoman Tina Pickett, Tina Bradford, Sullivan, and Susquehanna. I know it's three counties. And uh, our chair of the Insurance Committee, uh, Representative Kristen Phillips Hill, York County, Representative Seth Grove, uh, York County. And there was some great news today with respect to the impact fee uh, about what those revenues are bringing in. Act 13, we are convinced, is working and doing exactly what um, it was suggested to be doing, bringing in revenues to communities and to the state in significant numbers. And we want to applaud the fact that those revenues continue to come in to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Representative Jim Christiana. As you know, many of you, uh, the Shell Cracker plant um, that has been on the table and which continues to move forward, there's not a final commitment, but that Cracker plant is located in Beaver County where Representative Christiana and Representative Marshall represent. And we want to make sure that the opportunity to, to continue to grow the development of natural gas is done in an appropriate manner, just as we set forth in Act 13, where we have very tough environmental regulations, where we have an impact fee in place. And today we're going to um, promote and applaud the revenues that we are seeing coming in from that impact fee. And I turn it over to my colleague, Representative Jim Christiana. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as the Speaker had mentioned, today we've heard from some of our constituents. Many of them are excited with the revenues that were announced today. $222 million has been, uh, out, been, been raised by the impact fee in Act 13 that will be going back into the areas that are affected by the natural gas drilling. $222 million are being paid for by the natural gas industry. And as the speaker said, the purpose of that was not to send more and more money to Harrisburg, but to help those areas that are being affected by drilling. In Washington County, which I'm proud to represent, $6.5 million going back to Washington County. A 6.5% increase over last year. Beaver County, 423,000 going back to Beaver County a 14% increase. Since Act 13 was signed into law, $852 million have been paid as an assessment by the natural gas industry and driven back into the areas being affected by the natural gas drilling. The General Assembly enacted the impact fee in 2012 on the natural gas industry, not for Harrisburg to put more money into the general fund, but specifically to help those areas that are seeing increased costs due to the natural gas industry's activity. The Independent Fiscal Office has said that the current effective tax rate on the impact fee for 2015 is 4.7%. Folks, those aren't our numbers. That's the Independent Fiscal Office saying that there's no need for a severance tax, essentially, that we already assess this industry at 4.7 percent. Yet the governor's severance tax proposal is not rooted in data. It's more campaign rhetoric than, than anything. It's fairy tale revenue projections is what his severance tax proposal is. It's a fairy tale if you look over the timeline of the last 14 months. A 5% severance tax in February of 2014, the governor said it would bring in $550 million. In May of last year, he said a 5% severance tax would generate $700 million. September of last year, the same 5% severance tax all of a sudden would bring in a billion dollars. And in his budget proposal this year, the same 5% severance tax would now all of a sudden generate a billion, more than a billion dollars. But over that same 14 months, the price of natural gas has plummeted. So his revenue projections are a fairy tale. They are not realistic. But they will have significant consequences. The consequences, like the speaker had mentioned, could potentially have an impact on a shell cracker plant that will rely heavily on a robust natural gas industry. It could have an impact on the Delaware County refineries that were saved by this same industry. 
So while we talk about the impact fee and going back to areas affected by the production of natural gas, the end users are all across the Commonwealth. Just last week, the Tribune Democrat mentioned that a $900 million uh, electric generation plant fueled by natural gas of Pennsylvania would create 100 jobs, permanent jobs, 500 construction jobs, but they're dependent on a robust natural gas industry. This is a time where the governor needs to embrace the, 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 the great things that the natural gas industry has provided for Pennsylvania, and also acknowledge that the impact fee is doing is exactly what it was intended to do. It's generating revenue paid for by this industry, an industry that, like all Pennsylvania industries, are paying the 10th highest tax burden in the country. Pennsylvania is already the 10th highest taxing state in the country. We already have the second highest corporate net income tax. We do not need to lead the nation in another tax. So with that, I would encourage uh, my colleagues to stand with the speaker and myself and those up here and say that the impact fee is meeting its goals and therefore another severance tax will do more harm than good. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Thank you. We'll take any questions you have. Is there any uh, instance in which you would consider a severance tax? The governor's proposal with respect to a severance tax is um, completely punitive. Let me make it clear. The effective rate for the governor's severance tax that he has put on the table is essentially, for the southwest region of the state, about 15 percent, and for the northeast part of the state, it's about a 25 percent. That's based on what the dollar amount that's actually coming in today for um, a, a per MCF a per MCF measure on, on the, the price. Right now it's about a dollar twenty-three coming in um, in the Northeast. It's about a dollar eighty or a dollar seventy-two in the Southwest based on um, existing pipelines that are published prices. If you take the way the governor has put it on the table, he not only wants a five percent um, severance tax, he wants on top of that a 0.047 uh, MMBTU on top of that. If you start off with just that, that gets you the 8%. Then you are not allowing for any deductions, any deductions at all with respect to post-production costs in terms of what's being taxed. West Virginia allows that. West Virginia allows that. That takes it up to 10%. Uh, with respect to the effective rate. And this is at $2.07. We're measuring this at $2.07 per MCF, when right now it's actually coming in about $1.80 in the Southwest, and uh, as I said, about $1.30 about in the, about $1.20 in the Northeast. Uh, in addition, if you continue to make them pay taxes as the governor's proposal does on royalty rates, which is not done in West Virginia, uh, it comes in at 12 percent. You can add another two percentage points. And then finally, the fact that you're establishing a floor of $2.97, when in fact it's coming in at $1.20 in the Northeast, it's coming in at about $1.80 in the Southwest, and establish a floor of $2.97, you are putting the effective tax rate at 15 percent, at 15 percent as the IFO indicated, the highest in the nation. And with respect to the price differential in the Northeast, the northern part of our state, it's a 25 percent um, effective severance tax. The governor is basically calling for uh, a de facto moratorium akin to what New York has. And this is a, a development of natural gas is providing us the impact fee with significant monies for our local government and for our environmental programs. And in addition, it has employed to date 250,000 people direct and indirect all across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We saw Durabon, steel producers here in Stilton. We were down in Lancaster where two engineering went from about 150 employees to 400 employees in a new building. We are going down to Marcus Hook to talk about the refineries. They've reversed the direction of the pipeline. Instead of going from east to west, it's going from west to east so that at Marcus Hook they're now refining and making use of that natural gas. The opportunities to grow jobs in the private sector. We were up in Wyoming County when we heard about Procter & Gamble making use of the development of natural gas to lower their heating costs. We also heard um, with respect to uh, Cleveland Brothers in terms of their uh, equipment, highway and, and uh, construction equipment, they, they had almost doubled their number of employees with significant locations all throughout the Northeast. 
We'd heard about construction uh, folks that had actually increased their sales by 115% based on the development of natural gas. This is all over the state of Pennsylvania. We need to be developing the um, ch supply chain on the upstream, and we need to be developing the demand for use on the downstream. Think about the brownfields in Philadelphia right now, the brownfields that are not being used. You can develop a robust petrochemical, a robust petrochemical and plastics um, industry in those brownfield sites, making use of natural gas and giving Pennsylvanians jobs all across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Folks, in addition, West Virginia does not have the punitive corporate net income tax rate that we have. And um, on many fronts, the comparisons are just not the same. And as the good representative indicated from Beaver County, the net effect of the impact fee right now is close to 5%, and it's doing what we expected from it. Sir. Tender of budget things didn't go so well. So is that more of a catalyst for this? No, no, it has nothing to do with any budget negotiations. It, it has to do with the fact that the impact fee results and what they are bringing in came out today, and we wanted to promote that because from the debate, Pennsylvanians, the governor, I think, is, is forgetting to remind Pennsylvanians of the impact fee and how much revenue it's bringing in. It is a tax on natural gas. We all know that it's a tax on natural gas. We passed it, and, and the discussion has been as if we do not have a tax, and we do have a tax, an impact fee, and it's bringing in significant revenue, and it's being used in a significant ways. Yes, sir. The fact against the governor's proposal, does that mean uh, you would support a lower uh, rate or any additional money out of this, or is that a, is that a non-starter? I think the governor's severance tax proposals are designed to stop the growth of natural gas, and it is going to stop energy independence, and it is going to stop the, the growth of jobs in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That's what I think. The governor's proposal is going to stop jobs, and it's going to stop energy independence. It's punitive in nature, and it's short-sighted, and he ought to have an energy policy that's focused on growing the use of the product throughout the state. Every corner of the state is benefiting from it, and every... And, and everybody recognizes that the impact fee is having a positive effect. Yes, sir. How are budget negotiations going today? It sounded like things didn't go so well in the meeting this morning. Look, all budget negotiations um, with the parties at the table, you have to flesh out issues. We're meeting. We're meeting regularly. I think that you have to flesh out the industry, the, the issues, excuse me. The fact of the matter is um, we do have different directions on many if issues. I think liquor privatization and pension reform. I thought the Senate bill that they passed over to us was historic. I think everybody recognizes that if you are going to talk about education funding, you must talk about what you're going to do with public pension reform. You have to have public pension reform. We all want to make sure that there's further investment in public schools, but understand we are spending $27 billion today, $27 billion in state and local taxes on public education. We have increased spending on public education on a state level every year for the past four years. And the fact of the matter is, is to have that sort of discussion, we have to get to the cost driver. And pension benefits have been the driver in terms of our increased expenditures on a state and local level. And, 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 they, and I thought that what the Senate passed was historic. Yes. Can you up briefly uh, post-production costs and royalties and how the tax might impact that? Can you uh, touch on whether there have been any efforts uh, with the royalties bills that were proposed last session or uh, Senate? Or we're talking about the tax proposal and what right. it takes into account. But if you're talking there's about... There's not been any discussion on that front. Yes. Looking more for a yes or no answer here, is there any form of severance tax that Republicans would accept? The severance tax that has been put on the, the table by the governor will kill jobs in Pennsylvania. It will absolutely kill jobs in Pennsylvania. And I'm giving you our answer. It will kill jobs in Pennsylvania, and it will stop the move towards energy independence, period. That's my answer. Does that mean you, there's no separate Any other questions? With that, thank you very much. We very much appreciate it. What about the public perception?